will not cut off your intros. What the hell is that? Uh, starting off the news this week, Sir David Attenborough and the Natural History Unit of the BBC have won the Chatham House Prize for Blue Planet 2. In his celebratory interview with the BBC, Attenborough has praised the public response to the concerns raised about plastic use in the documentary series, saying that we're all shifting our behaviour. Attenborough and the BBC's Natural History Unit have another documentary series running at the moment, Seven Worlds, One Planet, and I recommend you all to check it out. It's pretty good. In other news, scientists from the UK believe they have finally found the remnants of the supernova 1987A. Guess which year that was observed? Supernova 1987A is one of the most famous supernovas, and the discovery of the material remnants of it, it being hypothesised to be a blob of hot gas and dust being heated by a neutron star, has caused great excitement in the astronomical world. It's predicted that far more will be revealed when the dust clears in the next 50 to 100 years. Starting off the paleontology news this week, an incredible development was published in the journal Nature, of which the proteome of the giant ape Gigantopithecus was retrieved from the dental enamel of a 1.9 million year old molar. This specimen was found in China, and the results of the study show that these huge animals were the sister group of living orangutans, sharing a common ancestor with them that lived between 12 and 10 million years ago. This study is particularly remarkable for the fact that this is the first time that genetic material this old has been recovered from such a warm, humid environment. This opens up the possibility that genetic information from our own early hominin relatives that lived in such environments may soon be able to be examined too, as before now, genetic information from specimens only as old as 10,000 years have been able to be obtained. Also in the news, we welcome this week not only a new genus of pterosaur, but also an entirely new clade containing six genera. A study published recently has re-examined a specimen of pterosaur from the early Cretaceous of Germany that was included in a species of Ornithochirus, but has now been reclassified into its own new genus which has been called Targaryen Draco, meaning Targaryen Dragon, a reference to the dragons in George R. R. Martin's Song of Ice and Fire and HBO's Game of Thrones, and the inspirations for these creatures that were drawn from pterosaurs. The reclassification has also resulted in a new clade being created, which is now named Targaryen Draconia, and contains Targaryen Draco itself, as well as five others. This newly recognised lineage of pterosaurs was cosmopolitan in distribution, and lasted for over 35 million years, living from the early to late Cretaceous. Next up, a new genus and species of ancient bird from the late Cretaceous of Antarctica has also been named this week. Called Antarcticavus cape lamensis, the description is based on a partial skeleton, and due to its incomplete nature, can only be provisionally assigned to ornithurans, a group including modern birds and several extinct lineages. This makes Antarcticavus the oldest bird so far described from Antarctica. Finally, there's also been a very cool paper published recently in which paleontologists looked at the diameters of vascular canals from several members of the plesiosaur lineage, through the use of bone-thin sections. They found that the inferred red blood cell size of these animals actually significantly increased from the more basal sauropterygians to the more derived pistosauroids. These conditions are also seen in living marine mammals and birds, and likely indicate that the ancient reptiles were adapting to deep diving, at the same time as the lineage was dispersing into more open waters. It's a very cool investigation into adaptation on the cellular level in prehistoric animals, and helps us to better understand these fascinating marine organisms. Thank you very much for watching this week's 7 Days of Science, and thank you to the Paleo Guy for the continuous plethora of articles that he streams onto our Discord. Hope you have a lovely week, and we'll see you on Sunday.